If you want it's Emily Fox, today's video is going to be my September wrap up. September, I finished eight books, which I think we can officially say out loud that I am no longer in a reading slump, which, woo! Uh, also good news, I did hit my updated <laughs> reading goal on Goodreads. I originally had 100 books, but then with the slump, made no sense, so I hit over 50 books read. Um, I think unofficially my goal is now switched to 65. I'm not going to do it just because I don't want to stress myself. But uh, yes, that's cool. So yes, let's go through the eight books I finished this month. Um, as always, I'm just going to go in order of the ones I finished. So the first one was actually an ebook, actually an arc. I read Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. I actually did a video where I reviewed all four of his books and I also placed them in order of like the ones I liked the most. Out of four so if you want to know all about his books obviously spoiler free uh, i recommend you check out this video i don't know why i'm struggling to talk words are hard today uh but yes this is a good trailer to read if you are in the mood right now it's a haunted house so during the fall it's the perfect moment you're following this woman who um she when she was younger she lived for two weeks in this house before her family and her had to flee because with things were going on, her dad ended up writing a book about it and, uh, you know, they became famous and rich, blah, blah, from it. And then when her dad dies, uh, he leaves her to house. She didn't know he still had it. And uh, yeah, she goes there to repair it and resell it where things start happening. I enjoy how the author was playing with timelines. You would have one chapter of uh, the book like the book that her dad wrote and then one chapter of her in present tense and uh, it just went back and forth like that and I enjoyed that bit. I enjoyed uh, the creepiness, the atmosphere. I definitely felt like it was well done. Um, as always uh, with this author, I feel like the female character kind of sucked. Like the main female character, he always writes one and they're always the weakest point of the book. I would be curious to see him write actually a male main character. Uh, but yeah, if you want to know more again about his other books, uh, I believe I ended up giving it the second position out of four. Uh, it's like a 3.75, I think I gave it out of five. Uh, pretty solid. Do recommend it if you enjoy uh, like creepy haunted house feels. Uh, I do think there were some good points in there. I do feel like it was nice because you couldn't figure it out too quickly. I feel like that's usually my issue with a lot of like mystery thrillers. So yes, uh, pretty solid read to start the month. <sighs> This was your fault, guys. Uh, you voted. I think like 80% of you wanted me to, 85% of you wanted me to read uh, Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. Uh, actually, most of you wanted me to read it while Emily wears fangs this way. She's still wearing them probably until like the end of October because, you know, Halloween. Unless I can find like a mini witch hat, that would be great. Maybe like if I can find like some black paper in my house, I can just do that. But yeah, uh, I end up reading it. I vlogged it. If you want to see that happening, I definitely recommend checking out the vlog because you can see I put a ton and I mean a ton of post-its and in the vlog, I would like show you especially all the new information because it's the same story as Twilight, but from Edward's point of view. And uh, I enjoyed how well, my favorite part was definitely the bits that you learn more information that you didn't know yet after reading, you know, the first four books. So uh, some fun new information. I definitely feel like I like certain characters even more than I did before. Uh, I despise <laughs> Edward more than ever. He's such a whiny blah. But yeah, uh, it was still a lot of fun to go through it. Uh, I definitely laughed quite often. And it was the perfect setting too, because that week it rained literally every single day. So it was the perfect mood for Twilight. But yes, uh, not like an unfun read, just like, let's be real, it wasn't something that I'm gonna die to reread and that probably would not even have read if it weren't for BookTube. But it's still like, it wasn't a total waste of time. So I think I gave it two stars because again, it's not amazing, but I had very low expectations. So yeah, if you just want to get the new information and not read it, watch a vlog. Otherwise, it had its uh, entertaining moments. <laughs> <sighs> I did it. I finally finished the first year trilogy by Robin Hobb. This is Assassin's Quest, which is the last book in this trilogy. Look at this chunky boy. Uh, it has over 800 pages. I went through this trilogy back and forth with the audiobooks, which aren't the best to be honest they're very old every 10 hours they tell you change cd even though there's no cds um so they were made a long time ago i think um i think between the first three books because the first book i read it in january since when did i finish whole trilogy in a year never um the first book i ended up giving it three stars i think i was fairly disappointed just because i had pretty high expectations i feel like i've heard of robin hobb you know her books 
since forever and uh, finally getting around to reading them and kind of being a little because mm, you're following an assassin but he, like he's very young in the first book and like not much happens and it's very character driven and even though I like the characters and the writing and the world building I just didn't feel like a lot happened um, in this one there are quite a few twists I did enjoy it a lot more I think I'm gonna give it four stars um, yeah, obviously gonna keep it spoiler free, but still enjoying the characters, the magic system, the world building. And I am curious to see where things are gonna go. Uh, I don't feel like I'm as invested into this world as I should be, uh, but still fairly enjoyable enough that I want to continue. I've been told so many times that the first trilogy is not the best one, so I'm like, I was prepared for it and I am very much excited to read the next one. I think it's the live trader, no, trade oh. the one with the boats. <laughs> Uh, I will be uh, continuing uh, reading from this world just because I'm curious to see how it's going to go. So yes, so yes, definitely enjoyed this one more than the two other ones. Um, I'm a little confused about this one, not gonna lie. Uh, Rebecca by Daphne Dzimohi. This is such a classic horror gothic book. Uh, I have heard so many things about this book for the longest time and I went back and forth with this one with the audiobook too just to see if I would enjoy it more that way. And I'm so confused. I don't know how to rate this. I think I'm gonna give it three stars because I, I did enjoy the whole atmosphere, but I feel like I should have cared more about the characters and when twists would happen, I was just like, okay. I was very detached from it all, I feel like. Uh, I did enjoy the writing. I do want to read more by her. I had seen the movie, My Cousin Rachel, which is also a book by her, and I absolutely need to read the book because the movie was amazing and I believe this is also becoming a movie, which I will be watching also. Maybe I'll enjoy it more that way too. Um, but yeah, I felt like, although I understood why the main character was the way she was, she kind of ended up annoying me a little bit. And yeah, I just, again, thought I was going to be more invested than I was into it. So please let me know how you personally feel because I feel like everyone raves about it so much and I'm just meh about it. So yeah, a little bit of a letdown here. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know the story, you're following this uh, girl who marries a widow and uh, she starts not knowing basically like what happened to the first wife, like suspecting weird things happened. We're gonna leave it at that, but yeah. I don't know, I thought I was going to love it more than I did. Next, a book I have been super excited to read, A Beautifully Foolish Inde Endeavor <laughs> by Hank Green. This is the second book in this, I think it's going to be a duology. Uh, I really enjoyed An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by him. Uh, I read it last year, it made it to my most surprising reads of the year. And I went into this one maybe a little too excited. It's a I want to say why, I know it's not why, but I feel like it's why, uh, sci-fi. And I think it's a very accessible uh, version. I feel like first contact with aliens usually tend to be kind of hard sci-fi, you know, in space and everything. And this happens in modern day with a young girl who becomes YouTube famous basically in the first book. And you're following the second book and it starts with where things left off, which again, I'm not going to say from the first book. And this was completely different from what I expected. You're seeing a story from a lot of different point of views instead of one and I feel like I really liked and didn't really care at the same time <laughs> where it went. I need to see reviews. I feel like it's still very uh, recently, it still came out very recently so there aren't a lot of reviews so far and they seem to be pretty divided although I feel like most people had heard uh, saying that they enjoyed book two more than book one, so I was probably more excited than I should have been. And uh, personally, I do prefer book one, throwing it out there. Is it still worth a read? Absolutely. I do think the author <laughs> saw the future somehow, and uh, it feels very relevant right now with what's going on. Again, keeping it super vague. Uh, interesting concepts. Um, I just, to be honest, I don't, I'm not sure what I was expecting. Uh, I do end up giving it, I think I'm going to give it 3.75. We'll round it up on Goodreads for now. Uh, but yeah, pretty solid read. Just, I thought the first book was a standalone. So again, my expectation might have been a little weird. I don't know how else to explain that one. I feel like it's the weirdest wrap up. So many books, I'm like, I'm on the fence about how I feel about them. But I still enjoyed it. Like I had no issue going through it pretty fast because I wanted to know where it was going to go. I think it's just been a weird month for me, a weird year. <laughs> Somehow, I managed to forget to talk about the best book that I've read in September. That's crazy. So, The Invisible Life of Adzilahu by V.E. Schwab. 
amazing, five stars, you need to read it. It's coming out uh, the first week of October, I believe. And uh, I have been describing the story uh, the way I heard it the first time. I feel like it's the best spoiler-free <laughs> way of saying it. So you're following the story of this French woman who uh, 300 years ago made a pact with a devil kind of accidentally. Uh, she was trying to not get married <laughs> to this man who was a widow and she just asked to be free and the devil obviously tricks her and um, gives her immortal life but nobody can remember her nobody can say her name she can't say her name so she is stuck basically every time she leaves the room people forget about her and she's stuck trying to survive through all of this and it's kind of a love story between her and the devil again we're gonna keep this super vague absolutely need to read this can't recommend this enough you need to pick it up this is by far my favorite book by the schwab by the way like you just you just need to pick it up her writing is just perfect in this one um next book i finished was an audiobook it was the chain um i had to read that one for my goodreads reading challenge uh, i think it was in the horror category i don't read a lot of them uh this one the, the premise super interesting, super intriguing. You're following a woman, her kid uh, is kidnapped and in order to get them back, she has to kidnap someone else's kids. And like, it, it starts a chain like that. So if you're not following the rules, there are consequences. They also have to pay like a ransom. It just, it's very complicated, but very thrilling. I, again, really enjoy the concept. I feel like the first third was definitely good. I do feel like the weakest point would be the writing, but again, not too bad, especially since I was listening to it as an audiobook. I feel like it was, it made it pretty accessible. And again, I'm kind of curious to see what other people are going to say, but um, the last third, I felt like was kind of pointless. Anybody else? Um, so yeah, I probably would have given it like a three, 3.5 until then. And it kind of went down a little bit uh, for me. I just feel like it became too big for what it, could have been like there was so much potential anyway uh, i think i'm gonna give it three stars it's not a bad book it's just something that i thought the concept was more interesting than the execution and then last but not least i just did a reading vlog i did the try a chapter book tag where i was trying the first chapter of five different mystery thrillers and the best one was the one i was going to continue and review and so many of you knew which one it was going to be uh before i go to sleep which i had seen the movie a year or two ago and I realized afterward after enjoying the movie that it was a book so I was really disappointed in myself. I don't like reading the book after watching the movie especially with these things with twists right it just ruins it. Uh, I waited long enough to forget <laughs> what the twist was about so I was able to truly enjoy this. Uh, you're following this woman who uh, wakes up every day not remembering her past the last you know like 20 plus years. Is it more? Probably more. Um, and she doesn't know who to trust so uh, she doesn't know if her husband is lying to her, if she's going crazy, or if she can trust a uh, doctor that helps her secretly. And she's writing down her uh, everyday life to try and figure out what's going on. And her book literally starts by do not trust Ben, basically her husband. So she just has no freaking clue what, <laughs> what's going on. And uh, neither will you throughout the whole book. You start feeling like, yeah, I it just, I really think it was well done. The fact that like, you start feeling like you can't trust anyone and you kind of just switch around like, oh no, I don't trust you now. Oh, oh, oh no, I don't trust you now. So yeah, I thought that was really well done. Um, I am giving it four stars. It was a very solid book. Definitely one of the best uh, of the ones that I've read this month. I feel like, like I was saying, a lot of them I was like, eh. I feel like I haven't enjoyed a lot of mystery thrillers in the last <laughs> while. Uh, so if you're looking for a good one, definitely adding this to uh, your list because next time I do an updated, you know, fall recommendation, this will be in there solid. So even though it wasn't the best reading month in terms of like giving it five stars to 10 books, you know, uh, I'm still very happy with my reading. I'm doing really well with my challenges and just the amount of books I've been able to actually finish. I feel like it's been very satisfying and I'm super excited for October and November. I am trying to again, trying to catch up for the Goodreads reading challenge because I'm doing my award show at the end of November. If you haven't seen it, I just posted my fall TBR slash October TBR. So yes, a lot of really exciting things happening. Oh, and by the way, I'm currently listening to How to Be an Anti-Racist, which is a nonfiction. I've been on the waiting list for literally four months. <laughs> so uh, I'm finally getting around to reading it. I've only listened to like 8% right now and so far it's really solid. And I'm currently still reading. I finally got back around to reading, continuing this the Toll by Neil Schusterman. 
yeah, because I didn't include them in my TBR, so I'm just letting you know. So this is it. I hope you enjoyed this wrap up. Uh, thumbs up, subscribe. Please let me in the comment section your opinion on these books, because like I said, I feel like I'm torn on a lot of these and would love to know what you thought about them. Also, let me know your favorite reads of the month because I always want to know. I will be putting more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out and I will see you in my next video very soon. Bye.